Hello and thank you for tuning in to what should hopefully be a short talk looking at your site and so far as part of the Northeast Ladybird Spot. You've certainly been doing an amazing job recording ladybirds across the region and as the season shift yet again now seem like the perfect time to look back at some of your discoveries but also to look forward at what's still to come during spring and summer. Throughout 2021 and the first part of 2022, you've made an incredible effort to find and record ladybirds across the region. To date, 150 people have taken part in the Northeast Ladybird Spot, 72 in this year alone, sharing a brilliant 2,300 ladybird records in total, at least at the time of writing this. These records have come from right across the region and have included a whopping 24 ladybird species, including some really quite scarce and beautiful ladybirds. In the first part of 2022 alone, you've already shared 970 sightings of 21 species. And thanks to you, the this Northeast ladybird spot looks set to be the biggest and best yet. Not least because this year, you've been looking for ladybirds in a whole manner of interesting places. In winter and early spring, most ladybirds remain tucked up in hibernation, waiting out the worst of the winter weather in sheltered spots. Not quite hibernating, but overwintering. They can, after all, wake up on warmer days. This year, you've made a concerted effort to find and record ladybirds at these winter quarters, particularly as part of a dedicated survey organised by NHSN's Invertebrate Specialist Group. You've paid particular attention to cemeteries with a great deal of success, but have also encountered ladybirds on conifers, in bark crevices, the leaf sheets of aquatic plants, and a whole manner of man-made structures, even indoors. But what exactly have you been finding? Well, let's take a quick look. The list shown here, taken from iRecord, shows your top 10 most recorded ladybirds as part of the Northeast Ladybird Spot. This list paints a pretty interesting picture, reflecting the overall abundance of certain species, such as the common harlequin and seven spot, but also the ease at which many ladybirds can be encountered at this time of year. The top seven species all being rather conspicuous and often overwintering on gravestones and other readily searchable spots. There are, however, a few surprises in this list. In 2021, we received very few records of the large ladybird, for example, but already this year, you've passed this total. Water ladybird too is an interesting addition as many more people get their eye in and start searching areas of suitable habitat. While the addition of stripe ladybird too is fantastic and came as quite a surprise. Over the next few slides, we'll take a closer look at what you've been spotting and a few of the scarcer species too. Starting first with what we would loosely call the familiar ladybirds, these being the species many of us will recognize and including some of the ones most easily found during winter and early spring. When talking about familiar ladybirds, none are more familiar than the seven spot the typical storybook species so many of us recognise owing to its distinctive pattern of red wing cases and seven black spots. This is one of our most common ladybird species nationally and it is no surprise that during the project to date it has been our most widely recorded species with some 696 sightings at the time of this talk. The generalist nature of this ladybird highlighted by the diversity of habitats in which you've been spotting it ranging from woodland and grassland to urban and upland sites. One thing that has been particularly noticeable in 2022 is that more of you have been finding this species in its wintering sites, particularly around conifers and in gorse. And it is also interesting to note that the species is one that does not appear too often along the large ladybird aggregations you've been spotting in cemeteries. I wonder why. One species that does crop up quite often in cemeteries is the equally distinctive two-spot ladybird, recognisable by its duo of two black spots sat atop red wing cases. Now, this is an interesting species to look at. While still very widespread and abundant, as shown by the map here, this ladybird is thought to have declined by 44% nationally since the arrival of the Harlequin ladybird. The reasons for this are thought to be the tendency of the larger species to outcompete it for food and to prey on its larvae. Still, your sightings suggest that the two-spot ladybird is still fairly widespread in our region, perhaps unsurprising given that the harlequin has not yet consolidated its range here to the same extent as it has in southern England. 
Records of the two-spot ladybird dropped off quite noticeably um, during the summer of 2021, likely as ladybirds became less stationary and somewhat harder to see. It will be interesting to see if this repeats itself again this year. Ah, speak of the devil. Another species many of you have been spotting, particularly in Newcastle, Gateshead, Sunderland and other urban areas is the non-native Harlequin ladybird. What is quite interesting looking at the map for this species is that there appears to be a strong correlation with urban areas where this species can be particularly numerous. Indeed, many of you have noticed large wintering gatherings of this hot species whilst visiting cemeteries in particular with counts often ranging well into the thousands. Whether this concentration of records around urban sites is down to recorder bias, many of us, like myself, live in the city after all, or genuine distribution remains to be unseen. But it is clear that fewer harlequins are found in rural areas in our region. The contrast between cemeteries in Newcastle and those in Rothbury, for example, couldn't be clearer. Perhaps this will be changed as more records are submitted and this large impressive ladybird begins to consolidate its hold more in the northeast. Who knows? The unmistakable orange ladybird now with its vibrant white spots sat atop orange wing cases. This ladybird represents a rare success story as it increased its population drastically across the UK in recent years. Once thought of as solely a woodland species, it is becoming increasingly common in urban areas where it is adapted to live on a range of broadleaf trees commonly planted in these settings. It will take time, but your sightings are certainly starting to reflect this with enormous counts of this species in Newcastle and outlying areas. Preston Cemetery in North Shields proving particularly popular when visited by local naturalist Mark Welfare. This is one species that is much easier to find during winter, commonly wintering low down on gravestones and tree trunks. In spring and summer, it moves to the treetops, becoming harder to see. Still, if you have a net or beating tray handy, it is possible to find the species at any time of year and it is well worth looking for. Last but definitely not least for today's familiar ladybirds, we have the small, black and altogether lovely pine ladybird. Now, this is an odd one and looking at the map here, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was found almost exclusively in Newcastle and surrounding areas. Despite its name, this species is actually pretty generalist and can be found in a wide range of habitats, including grassland and deciduous woodland. Prior to last year's Northeast Ladybird spot, there were only a handful of records of pine ladybird in our region. And it's great to see many more of you beginning to find and identify the species. This is one ladybird that is almost certainly present in other areas of the map, up into Northumberland and down into Durham. A recent record from the North Northumberland coast on Gorse, no less, showing that they can turn up virtually anywhere. If you spot one, we'd certainly love to know. One thing we're definitely seeing as part of the Northeast Ladybird spot this year is many more of you encountering our specialist ladybirds, particularly as recorders begin deliberate searches of prime habitats across the Northeast. For many of these species, their distribution in our region is poorly understood, but gradually you're helping build a clearer picture of where they are and how they're doing. Today, I've picked out just four of these to take a quick look at. An eye-catching ladybird found exclusively in aquatic habitats, such as the margins of ponds, ditches and lakes. The water ladybird is on the northern edge of its limp range here in the northeast. There are a few Scottish records, but by large, Northern England is the furthest north you'll encounter this species anywhere in the UK. Virtually unknown north of the time prior to the Northeast Ladybird spot, excluding a handful of records in Newcastle and one further up in Northumberland, your sightings are showing this species to be extremely abundant around the wetlands of Tyneside. At larger wetlands like those of NHSN's own Gosk of Nature Reserve, but also around smaller ponds such as the Great Park and in Heath. Since this map was created, water ladybirds have also been found further north near Ashington, which coupled with known populations in Durridge Bay shows a steady northward march in our region. While it has not yet been recorded north of the Corkit, it surely must be present in North Northumberland, and I wouldn't be surprised if in 2022 we begin to see records further north. Ooh, I do like these. 
a true stunner of a ladybird. The striped ladybird is a conifer specialist associated predominantly with mature Scots pines. To the left here, we have the typical maroon form that you're most likely to encounter, and to the right, the rare merylistic form of the species. Another ladybird with very few records in our, lady, in our region, only two sightings were shared of the species in all, in all of 2021. It may come as a bit of a surprise then that recording rate for this species has gone through the roof this year with sightings from several conifer rich sites in Newcastle and even further afield at Lyddington in Northumberland. This ladybird isn't outlandishly rare but can be very hard to see. A surefire way to find it is to carefully beat the branches of Scots pine and it would be fantastic if more of you might give it a go helping us learn more about the distribution of this eye-catching insect. Another conifer specialist now, and one with an even more limited distribution, at least if you believe the maps. The 18 spot ladybird is a particular beautiful species with white spots sat atop maroon wing cases. Records of this species were virtually non existent prior to the Northeast ladybird spot, but it is great now to see many more of you encountering this species. Again, the map shown here, with a distribution apparently restricted solely to Newcastle, likely reflects survey effort and the distribution of ladybird recorders as opposed to ladybirds themselves. However, with a punch on for Scots pine and other conifers, this ladybird could likely be found right across the northeast, wherever shelter belts and conifer plantations exist. If you have conifers in your area, however isolated, it is certainly worth keeping an eye out for the species. We hope that many more of you will encounter it as we move forward. Now, to finish these species accounts on something a little different, which, contrary to the other species shown today, may actually be somewhat of a rarity in our region. The cream streaked ladybird, another conifer specialist, was recorded for the first time as part of the project this year and has since been found at only three sites Benton and Jesmond Cemeteries in Newcastle, and slightly further afield at the Proda Specials. A fairly new arrival to the UK, first recorded in 1939, the species has a predominantly southern distribution, with only outlying records in northern England and Scotland. It does appear to be, however, to be increasing its range nationally and could well turn up at new sites as the project advances. A large ladybird, it can be very, very variable, but in the common form, it can be identified by the distinctive pattern of spots on the pronotum behind the head. While the Northeast Ladybird spot and ladybird recording in general in the Northeast has a long way to go and there's still much to reveal, your sightings are beginning to paint a pretty interesting picture. While anecdotal for the time being, I wanted to quickly explore a few of the trends emerging as more people set out in search of ladybirds across our region. First and foremost, an obvious result of the project so far is that you've been revealing new sites for a host of ladybird species adding greatly not just to the local picture, but providing important information to the national one too. We've mentioned so far a few of these already, but I just wanted to pull out two more examples of where your sightings are adding to the overall picture of ladybird natural history. To the left here, you have the inconspicuous ladybird, Skimnus nigrinus, a tiny black species which previously had only been recorded at a single site in the Northeast a historic record from NHSN's own Gosford Nature Reserve, no less. This year, the species has been discovered at another new site at Havana Nature Reserve in Newcastle. The ladybird to the right here is Heather ladybird, a species which according to distribution maps had not been recorded at all in the Northeast prior to the project. This year alone, two new sites have been discovered in Rothbury and at Dipton Woods, while a further record has come to light from Howick in Northumberland, courtesy of Stuart Sexton. As more people start looking at ladybirds, discoveries such as this will no doubt become more frequent. We've already touched on what might be a possible range expansion in the cream streaked ladybird, but your sightings are painting a broader species picture for other species too. The fantastic little ladybird shown here is the Adonis's ladybird, a predominantly southern species once associated with sandy soils that in recent years has become much more abundant on brownfield sites. Your sightings are helping paint a clearer picture of this species in particular in our region as it becomes more abundant and colonizes new sites. 
In time, your records should also paint a clearer picture of ladybird populations in our region too, though we'll need many more records to properly assess this. This year, NHSN's invertebrate specialist group, led by NHSN chair Gordon Port, launched a parallel survey examining the importance of cemeteries for our ladybirds. While it was clear that some cemeteries provide an excellent refuge for a range of species, especially in urban areas, the factors driving this remain unclear. Your sightings are gradually helping paint a clearer picture of not only which species are using these sites, but also the factors underpinning their use and abundance. From the tree species present to the aspect of gravestones and the importance of habitat isolation, your records are already painting an interesting picture and we look forward to sharing this in due course. As more people start recording ladybirds in the Northeast and others dedicate considerable time to analysing the ladybird communities of their individual sites, you're also beginning to show just how diverse and indeed important specific sites can be for ladybirds. Pulling out one example here, Havana Nature Reserve in Newcastle, and this site has been particularly well studied this year, including on the NHSN field trip shown here. Already, recorders have found a whopping 18 species of ladybird present on site, showing just how important pockets of suitable habitat can be for our ladybirds. Elsewhere, visits to inner city cemeteries have shown that where suitable habitat is limited to only a single isolated conifer, an incredible diversity of specialist ladybirds can be found concentrated together. Benton Cemetery is a really good example of this, um, with striped 18 spot eyed and cream streaked ladybirds found around a single isolated tree in early 2022. Well, we're only just into April and there's still plenty of time to go before the Northeast Ladybirds concludes for this year. Concludes in the sense that we'll take some time out to properly explore your findings and observations. The recording portals, of course, will remain open for you to use year round. So what can we expect as we head into spring and summer and things, things begin to warm up a little? Well, an obvious change set to occur is the increase in number and diversity of ladybirds out there to be discovered. In spring and summer, some ladybird species seldom seen in winter become a whole lot easier to find. Not least the 24 spot ladybird shown to the left here and the 14 spot ladybird to the right. The 22 spot ladybird with its black spots atop yellow wing cases also becomes much easier to find during this period, while scarcer species such as the Adonises and 11 spot ladybirds are much easier to track down. Spurred on by warming temperatures, spring will see ladybirds moving away from their wintering sites. And for now at least, the days of uncovering them on gravestones and within tree holes are numbered. Now, however, is the perfect time to turn your attention elsewhere to other habitats holding ladybirds. Grassland and coastal dunes becoming the perfect place for your own visits, What trees, shrubs and wildflowers of all kinds become worthy of close of inspection. Not to forget the water ladybird, which is much easier to find come summer as it begins to move through riparian vegetation. Also, now is a time when your gardens really come to the fore. And large or small, urban or rural, these vital patches of habitats can play a really important role for a whole host of ladybirds. With many species no longer tucked up in hibernation, it is worth spending some time searching for ladybirds a little closer to home. Whether you're looking for ladybirds in your garden or further afield in the countryside, please take some time to join the Northeast Ladybird Spot this spring. It's as simple as spotting a ladybird, taking a photo and sending your sighting to NHSN. You can now do this for three ways, on iRecord, through iNaturalist and through our very own website. And information on all of these, as well as a range of helpful guides, videos and resources can be found on the website too. It's worth remembering that all sighting shared as part of the project will also help create the Northeast's first ever Ladybird Atlas, an enormous project that everyone, wherever you are, can help with. Well, thank you for listening. It's always a pleasure to talk to you all about ladybirds um, and a big thank you to Chris Barlow and Joe Dobinson in particular, whose photographs form the backbone of this presentation. There's still plenty of time to get out and about spotting ladybirds and whenever you are, wherever you go, we look forward to seeing what you discover as we move into spring and eventually into summer. Thank you.